I am Matilda Dixon. Have you lost any teeth lately? The tooth fairy isn't as sweet as you may have been told. I was born Matilda Schultz on December 24, 1803, the youngest of seven children. My life took a difficult turn when my father left the family just one week after my birth. As a result, my mother and older siblings struggled to make ends meet by taking on any menial jobs they could find. However, everything changed when I met the dashing young sailor named Sonny Dixon. Sonny, on leave from his month-long sea voyage, frequented the bakery where I worked. It was love at first sight for both of us. Sadly, tragedy struck our small fishing village on January 13, 1836, when the whaling vessel Guiding Light was lost at sea during a terrible storm. Fifteen townsmen, including my beloved husband Sonny, perished that day. The town thrived due to a flourishing fishing industry and mainland prosperity, but I felt a void in my heart. My life revolved around Sonny, and without him, everything seemed confusing and empty. Baking was my passion, and after Sonny's passing, I started baking for the local children. I even prepared a special cake to commemorate the loss of their baby teeth, an occasion they eagerly awaited. While some parents found the practice strange, they recognized my kind-hearted nature and the joy it brought to their children. The original townspeople supported me and understood my history, but newcomers grew suspicious. The lingering dark cloud that had followed me throughout my life seemed palpable to them. Nevertheless, I persisted in my acts of kindness, although my behavior became more secretive. Then, on a cold night in 1840, a devastating oven fire consumed my house. Many believed I was trying to finish special treats for the children when the blaze erupted. By the time the town rushed to my aid, the fire had been extinguished. However, I refused to open the door or seek assistance. This event changed everything for both me and the town. I secluded myself during the day and prohibited the children from visiting. The townspeople started viewing me with increased skepticism. Although I no longer baked for the children openly, I continued to exchange gifts for their lost teeth. However, I had to wait until nighttime when the town was asleep. The children would leave a wrapped tooth on their front door, and I would wander the streets, leaving small change on their doorsteps. Rumors spread that I concealed my face behind a simple porcelain mask. Despite my acts of kindness and the tragic events of my past, the townspeople's anxieties regarding my peculiar behavior continued to grow. The night of September 23, 1841, marked a turning point that would change everything. On that fateful evening, two young children informed their parents that they were going to visit the Tooth Fairy and would return shortly. Hours passed, and there was no sign of the children. Their parents' concern turned to anger, and they began blaming me, the crazy old woman, for their disappearance. The townspeople divided into groups, searching in all directions. One group, led by a man named Colin O'Donnell, armed themselves with torches and ropes. They forcefully banged on my door, demanding my attention. I locked the doors and hid behind a table, begging them to leave me alone. Eventually, the men broke down the door and dragged me out of my own house. In the struggle, a jar containing countless baby teeth spilled onto the floor. The mob dragged me to a towering tree, and tears streamed down my face as I clutched my hands to my visage. Two men swiftly tossed a noose over a sturdy branch while the others struggled to pry my hands away so they could fasten the noose around my neck. Desperately, I fought back, shouting at them not to look. But they persisted, and eventually, they tore my hands away. My porcelain mask slipped from my face, landing on the ground as they tightened the noose and hoisted me up, ending my life. In those terrifying moments, the townspeople stood motionless, witnessing the lifeless body of Matilda Dixon swaying in the breeze, her white gown billowing. Then, the crowd slowly parted, revealing the two missing children everyone had been searching for. The leader of the lynch mob's eyes widened in shock, and he hurriedly cut me down. But it was too late I was already dead, and the entire town was guilty of my murder. The aftermath of my death was cloaked in secrecy. Local authorities reported it as accidental asphyxiation, and I was quietly buried in an unmarked grave in the town cemetery. My murder became a dark secret of the town. 
In 1861, the town continued to disrespect me when they needed to relocate the original cemetery for urban expansion. During the move, I was meant to be relocated to a final resting place, but tragically, my body was lost and has never been found to this day. For the following 60 years, Port Ferry experienced prosperity and happiness. The fishing industry flourished, businesses thrived, and the tragedies that had befallen me in the town became distant memories. However, the tranquility could not endure forever. In 1951, the plaque dedicated to my memory was stolen, and the area surrounding it was vandalized. Soon after, a group of teenagers started disappearing, and rumors circulated that their vanishing was connected to the desecration of my memorial. Initially, people assumed they had gone on surfing holidays or simply left town to escape the eerie stories. But living in Port Ferry for a while made one ponder if there might be some truth to the rumors. The town grew apprehensive, fearing a serial killer in their midst. Speculation about the curse of the Tooth Fairy began to circulate. Local law enforcement investigated the cases but largely classified them as runaways. People believed the Tooth Fairy was responsible for their disappearances. In 1953, a new plaque was erected to honor my memory, attempting to restore a sense of reverence. Since then, there have been no incidents attributed to the curse of the Tooth Fairy. My tragic story has transformed into a legend, drawing tourists to the small town of Port Ferry, Australia. They are captivated by the melancholic life and untimely demise of Matilda Dixon, the Tooth Fairy.